Welcome guys to the first edition of HRV TV. Um, this is brought to you by HRV Fitness and BMX Coach. Uh, if you haven't got hold of BMX Coach yet guys, you got no other hell idea what their BMX Coach is. BMX Coach is a uh, an app that's available on both Android and Apple. And um, there's also an online subscription at the moment as well you can purchase. So the subscription is $13.95 a month. And uh, what that gives you is a free program every month. Uh, all your sprints, all your gym stuff. Um, also gives you access to our free super secret um, little group that we have on Facebook. So I answer, I get on there, answer all your questions and stuff like that. It's pretty pretty awesome. So if you um, yeah, if you're looking to get some training in and uh, you're looking for something different, check it out. BMX Coach subscription. Uh, I'll um, there's a link here that's on the Facebook page somewhere. So get on there, uh, register. And um, yeah, you'll be a madman before you know it. So, first episode of HRV TV. And um, I was thinking when I was organizing all this, like, who would you get for your first host? Uh, sorry, for your first guest. And um, I was thinking, well, you might as well just try and get the number one rider in the world, Sam Willoughby. And so, um, yeah, made the call, put it out there, said to Sam, said, hey, you interested in coming out and um, coming out? You interested in having a bit of a chat online? He goes, yeah, yeah, no problem. So, I'm going to give Sam a, um, a call on Skype, and he's in the States at the moment, I'm in Australia, so we're going to have a bit of a chat and um, talk about the ins and outs of BMX, and um, yeah, should be awesome. So stay tuned, and um, yeah, let's get this party started. All right, okay, here we are, we've got the man, the man, the myth, the legend, Sam Willoughby. Um, how you going? Doing good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, good, good, man. How's it? Um, so, where are you? So, obviously, you live in America. Where about you live in these days? Yes, I'm living uh, in San Diego. Well, actually, a little bit south of San Diego in Chula Vista. Yep. So I've been here for uh, since 2012, really. The beginning of 2012, I got my place here, and then recently just moved into a new place here. So, just on the other side of Chula Vista now. Yeah, nice. How far are you from the track? Uh, ten minutes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Wasn't yeah, it funny? There was a thing that was like, um, like they wouldn't let foreigners ride the track for a little while or something like that. Wasn't that going on? Yeah, like we still don't get a lot of access to the Supercross track here in Chula, but there's a there's an ABA track as well. So um, Tyler Brown runs that. He lives a couple of minutes away. So he, me and him and I train together a bit. So we uh, we can ride there whenever we want. So okay. we spend a lot of time on that track. And actually now, that I'm actually getting on a Supercross track tomorrow. So they've just sort of, Starting to like trial freeing it up and letting us have a go, so we'll see how long it lasts. Yeah, that's cool. So that ABA track's only like a five minute hill or something. Yeah, it's just a yeah regular sort of ABA hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit bigger than a typical ABA hill, but yeah. Yeah, nice. So you got what have we got? Olympics coming up next year, isn't it? Yeah, so Olympics. Uh, yeah, next August. So you'll start doing all the um, all the UCI rounds and stuff again. Um. Yeah, I'll go to. Pretty much all the World Cups this year. I'll probably skip a couple still. It's just, it's kind of just a balancing act for me at this at this point because majority of my income still from racing here yep. like with the ABA USA BMX stuff now. Um, so yeah, it's just a juggling act for me. I'll try to do still do that and um, and then sort of just yeah race a few World Cups and obviously try try to be right for Worlds every year. You know that's kind of the big one for me. Yeah. And if I can go there and perform and perform at the World Cups I do here and um, should put me in a pretty good position. It's, it's yeah, BMX is a bit of a juggling act now. It's like, it's more, there's a lot of, you know, I guess uh, people you got to please. So it's it's just, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a juggling act of like, you know, there's, you obviously you want to make a living and so you can't just dedicate everything to, you know, the Olympic thing four years out and um, and race three or four times a year because it's just it's not possible. Yeah, yeah, for sure. How, um, so hey, just um, we'll go back real quick. We'll just um, for people that don't know, sort of a bit of your background and stuff like that. Let's just go over. So obviously, how long have you been in America for now? I've been in America for probably five years permanently. Yeah. Really, I um, I came in at the end of '08. Yep. And then sort of '09, I was just you know flying back and forward to Australia and just kind of having a go at it. Yep. And then it was permanent from 2010. Yep. Yep. Cool. And so where you started with uh, Yeti or something, wasn't it? Yeah, I just, um, just, that was kind of just a friend thing with Jared. I was good mates with Jared Graves. And, yep. um, he obviously had a, had a deal through Yeti and is uh, one of the main guys on the mountain bike side. And so he just helped me out basically yep. with bikes. Um, and I just kind of 
saved my own cash up and came over here and had a go, really. Yeah. And that's sort of it, isn't it? I think you just got to get out there and have a crack and, and just do what you can initially. Like, you know, you get a lot of the Australians now, they'll come out for two or three months and go back and then go back again for another two or three months and, you know. Yeah, you've, um, yeah, it's just one of those things that's not, it's not like I'd say, you know, I'd heard stories in the 90s and that sort of thing where, you know, teams would be like, oh, we want that kid from Australia, bring him over. It's it's not like that now. You know, you got to you got to kind of get off your ass and get on the plane and yeah. come over here and just... And have a go and sort of throw yourself in the deep end and um, and sort of see where you where you're at. I mean, it's harder than ever now to get a you know a financially rewarding sort of sponsorship to where you can do it full time. So you've really just got to come over here and throw yourself in the mix and uh, try to uh, make something happen. Yeah, for sure. Hey, um, what was I going to say? Uh, so this is like so obviously okay. You've been over there for five years. How what what is it with the Australians like? I mean, you look at all these trains that have gone over there, like, we've pretty much killed it, you know what I mean? I mean, how many ABA yeah. champions we've had, you know, we have yourself, um, Kalen, uh, Bootsy, Warwick. Warwick, yeah. You know, we've had, you know, a truckload of Australian. What, what's the difference? What separates the Australian riders over there, you think, from the USA riders? Um, I think it's just that, that fact of, like, what I touched on before in that you come over here and you've kind of just got to throw yourself in the deep end. You've got to make it happen. Um, these kids, the kids over here are pretty well looked after from a young age. You know, they're, they're used to getting pretty well sorted after. And uh, and the racing's so good here is that as kids, you know, they they develop really quick. They're really good at racing. Um, but I think kind of when they step into that sort of pro rank, they, they lose that what made them good when they were kids. You know, they lose that, that hunger and that fight. And I think as a, you know, the Australian guys that come over here and even just foreigners in general, yep. it's like... We've grown up racing, and, and it's kind of a flat scene, you know, growing up racing week to week in Australia at times, you know, it's not as awesome as you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you you come over here, like, almost like you're starting your, your career, you're starting fresh, you know, you're not burnt out, you're ready to have a go, and you just, you're just hungry, and I think that's kind of why, and it's, it's sort of a sink or swim thing for us as well when we come over here, it's like you're either going to make it or you're going to get in the plane and go home so yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. there's a little bit more on the line do you think the American guys like take it for granted a little bit what they've got yeah definitely some of them do yeah and uh, and there is a lot of talented kids but you know talent talent only takes you so far in, in all things in life so yeah. I think they uh, yeah they get to a point and it's and there's you know if someone someone from another country comes over and they're a little bit hungry it's uh, yeah it's pretty easy to spot yep How's um how's so you've been training with uh Sean Dwight for a little while now? Yeah, um, I started working with Sean pretty much right after the last Olympics. So yep. um yeah, going on three years now. Yeah. And how's he going? He sort of does he goes backwards and forwards, doesn't he? He comes over for a little while and then he'll go back and Yeah, yeah. So it's um he spent quite a bit of time over here the first year I started working with him, pretty much twelve months. He pretty yep. much lived with me. Um and that kind of built a good foundation in that sort of got in that rhythm of how he done things and um, kind of changed how I approached things a bit. And then uh, since then, it's it's uh, sort of just been, yeah, he comes back and forward, goes home. He's at home at the moment in Sydney. Yep. Um, he's been um, racing, man. He's been racing the, um, he's probably been telling you, but yeah, he's been yeah. racing the National Series over here. So it's been yeah. fun, man. Me and him have been battling he's backwards like... and forwards. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, so he's pretty into it. But um, yeah, so we, we have more of, I guess, like a, I guess, Skype, and phone relationship most of the time but um obviously he comes to all the major events and then bigger training blocks like worlds and the grounds he comes over and spends a bit of time here yeah nice nice you got any good sean stories ah uh, plenty uh, <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what i can yeah you got to sort of um yeah, well, uh, edit, me edit, me edit for tv me a good one. probably the ones that when you grew up with him are better than recently i'll tell you i'll tell you a good one you ready for a good one me and yeah. um we did this tour right it was me warwick Luke Medill, um, I think I think Kay, um, Kyle was there, Kyle Bennett, yeah. and we're at a um, Denny's, right, getting breakfast. Yeah. And um, so we've had breakfast and that we've left. We've gone out in the car, and Sean's like, "Oh, my wallet! I've lost my wallet." You know how he's really good at like leaving <laughs> yeah. leaving shit everywhere. So he's like, oh, "I've lost my wallet." So we go back in, right? And he's like, oh, "I must have left it at the table." So he goes back to the table, and it's gone, right? And Warwick's just losing. He's going. Where's that waiter? Where's that waiter? And we're like, oh, you know, we left our wallet here, man. Just give us the wallet back. And the waiter's like, no, no, I haven't got it. Warwick's just like, 
man, look, we know you took it, man. Just give us the wallet back, you know what I mean? He's just leaving it. And uh, so it went on for about a little while anyway. And then Sean's like, oh, maybe it went left in the toilet. So he's gone back in the toilet and it was sitting on the top of the toilet bowl. Oh, the, <laughs> like the flat. Oh, man, it's so funny. In tears. In tears. Was that, was that after his big crash? No, that was before. Oh, no, that was before. That must have been before. So that was like... He didn't have much of a memory before the crash then. Yeah, terrible. Terrible. Just <laughs> leaving shit everywhere. Like, funny as yeah. though. Like, it's, yeah. yeah. So much fun, man. We were there for six weeks, you know, and just, it was nuts. Best. Yeah. 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 It was just crazy. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> hey, so um, how's Dean going, man? Like, he's, he's like, man, he's done the hard yards, hey? Like, I mean, similar to yourself. Yeah. He's gone over there and um, did a few months last year and then, uh, you know, obviously he stuck it out pretty much the whole year last year, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he did a full season, like when he got on Dale's team, and yep. um, so yeah, now he's he actually yeah lives about five minutes away, so he's uh, at Tyler's place, and yep. now he's gone he's gone really good. He's doing all the right things, and yep. um, he I think he'll be this last year. He kind of did his first full year, and then I think this year he'll he'll be pretty solid. It's yeah. cool, man. You stoked having like riding with someone you grew up with and having a bit yeah, of Australian blood hanging out. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's it's funny we uh. We said it as kids, like growing up, because we we've, we've raced each other since we were seven, and yeah. we're pretty good mates. And um, we always used to say we're going to go to America and race, and you know, as all kids do in Australia, I guess. But yeah. yeah, it was pretty cool. Like the other week in Phoenix when we we raced, and he was out front, and then I ended up winning. And just you know, those moments where like you, you know, it was, it was kind of like a wake up call. Oh shit! Really fun, so it was pretty cool. Yeah. You're getting happy belly flashbacks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's funny that race in Phoenix, like where that track is, it's called Happy Valley as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. How <laughs> sick. There you go. Good for that. Um, yeah, that's cool. Oh, I'm going to have to unplug this phone. People ringing me. Stop ringing me. I don't want to know. Yeah. Um, might be people calling in. Might be they want to chat the live show. I don't know. People are all excited. <laughs> hey, um, so how's your relationship with Redline now? You've been riding with them for a few years now. Yeah, been really, um, well, they're kind of oh. Redline at the time. Gork, oh Gork was God. there, so he now he was the team, the marketing guy at Redline when I got over here, and he kind of gave me a shot between him and Bill DeMay. They kind of got together and gave me my first shot and got me started over here. And then um, yeah, I've sort of going on. This is my fifth year with them now, so yeah, re- really happy. And uh, they yeah kind of treat me like family now. And, uh, in a pretty good place with them, so try to definitely stay at the top of my game so I can stay where I am with them. Stay yeah. where I am with them, and um, I'm signed with them through till the end of 2016. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. What? Um. Uh, so let's go back a little bit. So growing up, so who did you really look up to growing up? Growing up, originally it was um, yourself and Darren. Yeah, there you go. You guys came over to the classic almost yep. every year. And- um, you probably remember you came over to my house. Yeah, you had little jumps in your backyard. Little jumps, yeah. Yeah, that was cool. You guys came and visit. Like that was like I think I, I don't know how it came about. I wanted the pros to come to my house, and probably mum and dad went up to you guys and said, "Would you come over?" Well, I didn't, I didn't even know. I didn't know where we we're going. I I was with Darren, and Darren's like, "Oh, yeah. I gotta go to this kid's house, man. Nah, he's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty cool. You know, I always look after him, and he's pretty cool." I was like, "Oh yeah, no worries." We just, you know, obviously went over and hung out for a little bit, but yeah, it was good fun. Back yeah, in the day. Yeah, so and that's funny, you know, like you remember little kids like I did a thing in um, Northern Territory once years and years and years ago and it turned out I stayed at um, uh, Junga. What's that? What's that? Chris Junglewood? Chris Junglewood, yeah. I stayed at his place. Really? Yeah. So there was me, like Anthony Way, Dean Patch, yeah. like all these guys and we did like a tour around in, in Alice Springs and, you know, he, yeah. he went on to go to Commonwealth Games and all sorts of stuff. So, oh, yeah, that's cool. it's pretty cool. Yeah, so it was originally just yeah yourself and Darren, and um, I think I liked Darren because he I had a, I was bad. I guess I still do a bit, but I had a bad temper as a kid. <laughs> so I could, Darren was kind of the same way. It was funny, huh? <laughs> hey, loser! Like I'd go to races with him, and I and like if I ever beat him, which was rare, but if I ever beat him, he'd be like, "Hey, not talking, not talking." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. So I think I seen that with him, and I was kind of like, "All right, yeah, it's cool. It's okay to have a temper." <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you feel about like in Australia? Do you feel obviously you spent most of your career over in uh, America as your pro riding career? Do you feel a little bit underappreciated in Australia? I guess. Um, no, not at all, really. I, I mean, when I come back, I'm these days. It's it's pretty surreal, really, that, that how much support I get. I mean, I'm not. 
it's just different with the way the world's gone now, all this social media and that kind of stuff. And I'm, yeah, not, yeah. I'm not really into it. I'm not real big on it. So I could probably be better at it and then I'd probably get a lot more support. But yeah, you click, <laughs> well, everything's so connected now, isn't it? It's only a click away, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's kind of how, it's good and bad. I think that's how like you can kind of make fake fame out of it. Yep. And so it's just, yeah, that, that's kind of, where it's at now but so I never really know what my support level is like but then when I do come back or I do do well at a race over here and, and you see the response it gets it's it's always pretty cool so I think there's definitely people out there that, that watch and um, and I'd like to do some stuff you know more moving forward where you know now that I'm a bit more set up over here and like help some kids come over here and even that it's a place to stay or yep. you know run some sort of thing and just, and just sort of help out and give back in that way but um, you can set up like Luke's house man <laughs> No, I don't want to run a school. But you can like, <laughs> like have a little shed out the back for some bunk beds and uh, build a track. Yeah, and like one kid can come one time and stay. <laughs> I, man, I'm like busloads. I can see you picking up dudes at the airport with a bus. <laughs> yeah. That'd be rad. Yeah. yeah. That'd be, I, mean, I mean, that's a little gateway you can do there. You know, it's a little segue from Australia to America. It's like make it as painless as possible. You know, something. Yeah. yeah. No, for sure. That. If I could help, you know. Help someone's transition be a bit so, easier. Yeah. Just give Sam a call, guys. Just um, hit him up yeah. on Facebook. Everyone interested in going to America and yeah, yeah. racing? Yeah. Hit, hit me up on uh, on my Instagram. <laughs> see if you can find it. <laughs> uh, how do you like racing in Australia? You come back every now and then. You do some races. How do you like that? Yeah, I like it. When I mean, it's it's hard now when you do come back. It's it's one of those things like anyone that's come over here and then you go back to Australia. Everyone's kind of there's a pretty big target on your back. Yep. So. They're kind of some of the hardest races that I do now. There's a lot of I just feel the pressure when I go back there a bit yeah, yeah, to yeah. perform. Um, and and generally, a lot of the times, it's you know like Narang or even the Nationals. A lot of the times, they fall like right in the middle of other priorities that I've got going on. So it's just a juggling act to come yeah. back and. Um, but it's all it's all a good experience and try to still perform and. Um, but. Uh, no, I definitely enjoy it. I really enjoyed the Nationals in Shepherd and last year they were, I really liked that track. And, that was a good race, uh, man. That last race between you and Dean, just going yeah. head to that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that was good. So, um, so yeah, I, I enjoy it. It's How, good. what happened at the start of the year? You sort of, you had a bit of a rocky start at the start of the year, like Narang. I just, I was watching your gates, man, like you're getting it or you weren't getting it. You were just like smashing yeah. the shit out of that gate or you're like six bikes ahead of the bottom of the hill. So, just same sort of yeah. thing, just a bit of pressure on yourself to, to perform, was it or? Well, Narang was different that in the respect that I wasn't going to go until three days before, and then I'd just been sitting around, kind of depressed after the grands, and was still a bit injured and drinking beers. Uh, How many beers did you have that morning? Like, sorry. How many beers did you have that morning? Which one? Narang the, morning. Narang, yeah, just four or five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then like three days out, Sean's like, "I need to get off the couch. Come, come race Narang." Yeah. Um, he just wanted me to watch him race, so, but anyway, now nah, he was kind of like get back on the horse and yeah, yeah. Come racing and so I was like, all right, I'll, I was coming to Australia anyway because we had a, a camp and that sort of thing. So I just changed my ticket and come a few days earlier. And, yeah, cool. Um, and then went there and yeah, fucked that one up as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I think people love it, man. People love just having you there. You know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. surprised they don't do more with you when you are there. Like grab you and take you up in the commentary tower and talk shit to you and all that sort of stuff. Like I'm surprised they don't do more of that stuff. You and know, that's the kind of stuff I'd like to do. Like yeah, just go up and just yeah talk shit on the, on yeah. the microphone and just do stuff out at the track within our BMX community yeah. and and that kind of stuff. But yeah, I guess we just I don't know. We get caught up in the the new age of. Yeah. sending tweets and yeah I guess it's so different things. when you're racing it's different like I mean obviously you don't want to talk to people when you're racing but you know when you're not yeah. racing if you're just there hanging out I mean you could have I mean on the Saturday you didn't race I think you raced the Sunday only or something like that or was it the Friday yeah, I think it was Friday, yeah Friday, Friday Saturday so I, yeah Friday I just went there and hung out and I was just you yeah know, filming it's like hey BMX like, Australia you got the fastest dude in the world here hey you should probably talk to him and <laughs> crazy isn't it so um cool um alright Random question. So, what's the what's the craziest thing you've ever seen at a BMX track? Craziest thing on a BMX track? Or in or at or at. you got any um, at? Is that Alice? Elise? Just give me shit in the background. I don't know. Yeah, they're in the other room. Oh, I don't okay. know. <laughs> hey, is Max over there? Yet? No, he's uh, he's he's with Sean in Sydney. Oh, is he? Is yeah. he coming back over or what's he doing? 
Uh, he will probably towards the end of the year. He's going to try to do a bit of training, get ready, and oh, okay. see where he's at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, That's right. I forgot he went up to Sydney for a couple of months, so. He's got that yeah. that Kiwi kid with him as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Hanging out. So then train him up, and Max is just going to do the Nationals, I think, see where he's at then, and then from there, sort of figure out a plan for the rest of the year. Yeah. It's, it's mental toughness, huh? Like, it's such a hard sport to to switch everything on for a 40-second event and just have everything yep. go perfect. You know what I mean? It's yep. such a hard yep. sport. and I mean, I coach a lot of kids as well and, and trying to get that their head around that, that, you know, it's not going to happen every time. You know what I mean? And it's a hard thing. That, yeah, it's a really hard thing to get your head around. Like, I've, obviously, we've all been through it with BMX. It's just there's so many things that are out of your control yep. and being able to be content with that and knowing that, yeah, you can... There really is no... Um, I guess as athletes, you kind of want to just be like, all right, I, did, I ticked this box, I did this, I did that, I'm good to go, I'm going to win the yeah. race. And, the, and it's kind of like that, I guess, brat attitude of like, you know, I've done all the stuff, like it should just come together now and yeah. it should just, you know, the, I should just win the race. And But there's so many variables to our sport that you've really just got to be, I guess, adaptable and flexible. And, yeah. um, and there's not a lot of other sports like it. There's not a lot yeah, of other it, sports it, like it, is there? There's really not because... The, not really. Like, I guess you could compare cross or something like that a little bit, where there's, or even you know, car racing and that, where there's you know, there's contact and stuff. But those sports, you have so much time to make up for mistakes. Like, yeah. Where, so what do you got? A two hundred meter like, race or a three hundred, a two hundred meter sprint or a hundred meter sprint? But even then, they got their own lanes. You know, what I mean, yeah, so you're not getting caught. Like track and field, but we've got, you know, you take the lanes out of track and field and let dudes start swinging their arms around, <laughs> and that's being action. You know? That'd be more fun. Maybe we should start. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. Um, all right, so craziest thing in BMX. What do you got? Anything good? Craziest thing I've seen. The wild man doing backflips? <laughs> I think you just, pretty much you just go to any BMX race. You know, you go to a country country BMX race in, in Australia or here you go to a race in like North Carolina and you just see some rednecks. And <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think what the craziest thing I've seen. I can't think of it right now, but one okay. story that I'll, but Jared did tell me that was pretty funny. He was in, uh, he had a race in like West Virginia or something. Yeah. And this dad come up to the kid and he said to him, the kid couldn't do this jump. And the, and he, the dad comes up to him, just, you know, a mullet and just a typical American running on a hype. And he's like, <laughs> son, we are American, not American. <laughs> did he jump it? Did he jump it after that? Yeah, he jumped it. It's American. That's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not American. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. All right. Hey, um, uh, a couple more. One more. Uh, what advice you got for young guys and girls who want to follow in your footsteps? Uh, I think, just like I said earlier, just just get over. Get over here as, as soon as you can and just have a, have a go at it. Um, there's, I guess, don't get too caught up in the... I guess I was lucky in the respect that when I started out, the BMX wasn't as complicated as it's getting now, to where you know everyone's everyone's got a trainer and everyone's got all these standards that they have to live up to, and it was kind of going that direction, but it wasn't quite there yet. Yeah. So, I guess don't be, don't make it harder than it needs to be. You know, just <laughs> somehow try to keep that mentality of you know keep it simple, stupid sort of thing. And yeah. Um, and do those things that, you know, maybe what you're doing to get to where you are, maybe, you know, it might seem simple and there might be something out there of a more complicated, better way, but, you know, maybe it's working for a reason and just trust the basic things and just do them well and do them better each day. And, yep. um, and then the, our sport, the biggest part of our sport, like we touched on, is the, the competitive and um, mental aspect. And so don't be afraid to get, don't be afraid to race. Just mm-hmm. race, 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 mm-hmm. learn. Get out on the track, learn, and um, yeah, that that stuff's priceless, and you'll um, it'll it'll take you a long way. And I think that's why the the American guys over here that they are so good because they do race so much, and they just they they learn so much as kids that they don't even realize that they're learning. And uh, it's very easy to you know get away from that now with the way the sport's gone and all these things that we're told we have to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. That's cool. All right. Hey, so um, 
Did you want to thank anyone before we go? So obviously you got about about a thousand sponsors, yeah. So Redline, uh, Coke, obviously. What is Redline Coke? Truly, Oakley, um, other, you know, Sean Coach. Um, Lizard Skin. What's that? Self, doing this interview. It's cool to do this stuff. So there you go. Have to do something again. Who's those grips um, you got now? You got new grips or something? Lizard. Oh yeah, Lizard Skin grips. There you go. Uh, yeah. So. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. No know, worries. Family, friend, all that stuff. Yeah, nice. When are you That's back in Australia? Get people to call in with some questions. Yeah, yeah. When are you, when are you back in Australia? Uh, I'll be back for the Nationals. Oh, yeah, nice. Where are they? Yeah. They're in Sleeman, aren't they? Sleeman. Yeah. Yeah, and do a bit better than you did last time. Yeah, we'll see, yeah. Fuck, yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm racing as well, so it'll be fun. Let's put the gate down. We'll just do a rolling start this time. <laughs> they've changed it. I don't know what the track's like. I've heard that they've changed it. I heard it's a bit crazy. Yeah, I raced there. Oh, yeah, you raced one after they change it. A few days after Narang, yeah. Yep. The layout's all right. It's, it was pretty rough when we were there, but I think they're fixing that up. So. Yeah, I think they changed it again since then. Oh, really? Yeah, they've gone okay. back in. So. All right. Awesome, man. Hey, look, thanks for your time, and right, um, nice. thanks, for, thanks for coming on board, and um, yeah, hopefully everyone gets on board and likes this and shares the shit out of it, and um, yeah. yeah, thanks for coming on board, mate. All right, no worries, and... Uh, Hopefully everyone enjoys it. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, man. Okay. See you, mate. That's right.